along a much simpler example. Just to show you the full end-to-end -end, uh, add, update, and delete. Of course, get you already know how to do get. Uh, so let me show you, here is the file. I have heroes here. Okay, some heroes and their type and some codes that they have set. Okay, and what I want to do, I want to display this list and I want to be able to edit, update, sorry, add, update, and delete from this heroes list. So first of all, what I, fir I, I, what I did first is I created this repository, similar to the student repository, and in here I have two major files, two major methods, get a particular hero by ID, and get all the heroes. Okay, and I did similar, similar, to, the, similar to the student. You can see here, once you understand one example, it's exactly this, it's kind of the same, whether you do with students or heroes or books or... You're basically manipulating objects. So first, just to show you, I, will be, I wrote this and put it in a separate class and exported it so I can make use of it in another file, just for modularity purposes. And then I, I, I have this little file to test it. Before I make it available to the web, I want to make sure it works before we embarrass ourselves and make it accessible to the whole world. Here it is. So I can run this, and you can see it will be hopefully all working. This is all heroes, all of them, as an array, and this is one particular one. It's clear? So one is getting all, and then the other one is getting one particular one. Now, my repository is fully working. Now I'm confident. I can make it available to the next group. So if I want to make it available, I will go to that same same app, app.js. Yes, I, I already have that stuff from student. I will add more extra, extra URLs. So the server is all about if somebody comes to this URL, this is what you need to do. So I'm mapping. The server is nothing but doing mapping a URL to a function. That's what the server programming is. And of course, the verb. So let me be more precise. The HTTP verb, get or post or put or delete, and we'll, as we will see, and a URL. These two, I am mapping them to a function. So if somebody comes, let's say, here it is. Here is how it is, how it is done. If somebody comes to slash API slash heroes using a get request, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go along to go to this repository. It has a, a tested method that works called get heroes. And by the way, this is a promise. So you need to uh, call it and hope for the best. And if it comes back successfully, you will get at your hand heroes. And then all you need to do is send them off to the request. And I already explained that Express already did it, a lot of work in the background and hand it over to you two objects. Request and response. The request to read the input coming from the reply, and the response is to send back the reply. Now, you can see here my API and my URLs has changed a little bit. Just as a good practice, anything that is programmatically accessible, like any URL that generates JSON rather than generated GML, you better put it under API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. API, Application Programming Interface. What this means is, really, I, I hope by now you already understand that the web, there are two major parts of the web. There is one part used by humans. This is where we go to these URLs and see these nice written pages with images and videos and so on. And there is also the programmable web where other programs come to the web to get information. So, so that usually these URLs, URLs for, that are dedicated for programming the web, we just, it's good practice to put API in front of them. So we, dis we distinguish them from the, the human web. Okay? I, I will explain this further as we move forward. It, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. If you want to just make it slash heroes, that is also fine. 
but the good practice is to make it slash API slash heroes. Okay, so let us now test this. So I run this. No, not this one, sorry, I run the app. So I run the app. So it's, after I configure this app, I make it listen on a port. You see the last line here is listen on this port. And now the server is listening on this port. So let me go there. And let me go to slash API slash heroes. Slash a heroes with E. The plural at E. Okay? These are the lists. Exactly the same list I got when I wrote when I run it on the on this black on the terminal. Okay? Exactly the same. So here's my list, it's working fine. This one is what what is the data format of this? JSON. JSON. So a URL, a URL that returns a JSON data format, we call it a REST REST service. I will explain the theory later on, but for now just keep the name because you will see this name very heavily used on the web. REST service. Another name for it is Web API. This is basically you, this is for the programmable web. Don't give your users the information in, in this format. So, the, us as users, we like to see nicely formatted HTML pages with tables and colors because that makes life easier to understand and read the content. But for programs, they hate that. They hate those formats. The program does not care about those formats. The program cares about the structure. It cares about this is an array. When, when you have a program and the program receives this JSON, it likes it so much because it, it communicates not only the data but also the structure. So in here I can tell, the program can say, oh I have here an array of objects and each object has four properties and it can go and get to that particular element very, very easily. Now, programmatically, to, if this was in HTML, it's very, very hard to do. So, for example, let's say uh, some people do it. This is called uh, screen scraping. You have a web page and you try to extract some information from the page, programmatically. Like, for example, let's say you say here REST services. By the way, this is very, very famous word. One, more than one billion hits. Uh, so, I will explain them, but for now, what is a REST service? It's an API programmable. Basically, basically, it's a URL that returns a JSON. It's some kind of program that returns a JSON. And this, pro and this URL is usually for programmatic access, not for end users. Okay? Uh, so, if I want to get this number, it is very hard. I, of course, I can download this page as a string, and good luck finding this particular name. But if it, was, if it was JSON, I can get to it very easily. And by the way, if it is a page, from time to time, Google changes the, the layout of the page. Maybe they put this somewhere else, or in a different uh, element. Maybe now they are using span, next time they use a div, and you, you, your screen scraping program needs to check. So dealing with the HTML using a program is not very trivial. But if you really, uh, but the good news is you can do the search, you can do Google search using REST service. Anything you can do with Google using the, the user interface, you can also use using REST services. You can do programmatic search through Google. Mm -hmm. Same for Facebook, same for Amazon. That's why what you have is you have one API, multiple interfaces. Mm -hmm. So let's say Facebook, you have a web, web page, Facebook, like HTML page. You have the web app, mm -hmm. Android, and, and, and iOS. For QNB, for example, the same. Even Blackboard, although they, they, don't, they don't enable it here. Mm -hmm. You have the web interface, and you have the mobile interface. So REST services really allows you to put multiple views or multiple interfaces for the same functionality. Very powerful, very powerful idea, and very powerful technology, okay? So, that's it, that's what I want to say. Now, if I want to get one particular hero, 
all I need to do is slash and the ID. Let's say one, and I get that particular here, not all of them. So in this case, this is part of the URL, but this is not really part of the URL. This is a parameter that I'm passing to that URL. So here it is. In here, I have another URL that has slash hero slash ID. And the ID in this case is what? So the good news is the express does the, does the hard work in the background and makes this ID available through this property of request. So request has a built-in property called params and anything that was passed in the URL will be added here. If you call it, let's say, hero ID, you can access it here through hero ID. It's not always ID, you can put whatever name you want. Whatever name, of, this is a name of a parameter. And then, all I do, I call my repository, pass it the ID, and this is a promise, I, hopefully it will be fulfilled. Once fulfilled, I will make use of it to return to the, to the request. Now, this is a web API or a REST service. I can call it now from any program, Java program, .NET program, JavaScript, Android, and so on. Those of you who did mobile development, maybe you have seen it. Okay. That's it. Now, I have the REST services already. It's now time to make use of them. So I created a page here called Hero. And what this page has, it has a couple of templates. Here's the template. So, the first template is, it takes, it takes in a list of heroes, and because it is a list, it will look through them. See here, in the hash h, and, the, and it's closed by, here it is, by slash h. And within it, I convert each hero to a table, to a row in this table. Okay? Now, in each row, I want to grab the name. I will only show the name. That's what I decided to show. Now, beside each name, I am providing some links. Here is becoming, starting to become a bit interesting. Yeah. So, beside each name, I am providing some links. First of all, even before this, I provided another link. Have a look at this. I have a link there. Here is a link. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a link here to do add button. I have not finished this example. We'll try to finish it together. Uh, here is the ad, and beside each name, I am providing three buttons or three links. One is display, I just display the details of that hero, or I update it, or I can remove it. It is clear? Yes. So, and then we will see how we handle each of those, of those links. So let's first uh, run this. So to, to get to that, I basically, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting out of the programmable web. The programmable web is available under API slash. That's the programmable web. The human web is just under the, under the slash. So I distinguish between them by putting the programmable, the, the REST services and the API and the API sub URL. Okay? So in here, I just put hero.html. And you can see what happened here. I only had, what I had is, I had basically a template. This is how it works. This is how the modern web development works. You have a template, and you have a REST services on the, on the, on the server side. When the page loads, you go to the server, fetch the data, feed it to the template, and generate the HTML on the client side. Okay. So, so let me show you that before we move forward. Uh, you're already a bit familiar with it from the student example. So all the code behind this page, I put it in a, in a, sorry, in a JavaScript file with the same name as the HTML file dash client. Now you can call it whatever. This is just my, um, my convention. Although this is not very well organized, I'm still cooking, still doing it, but uh, it's not bad. All right, here it is. So now, 
Again, we, we have to throw a couple of new ingredients into the pot. We have uh, jQuery to help us manipulate the page and listen to events. And we have this uh, angle, uh, what do we call them? Handlebars yes. to create the templates. Okay. So these are libraries that are widely used and open source to make our life easier. So here is the, how jQuery, as I explained last time, works. It, the whole library is available through this dollar percentage. And what I'm doing in here, I am going and say, oh, please, when the uh, document is ready, which means it's fully loaded on the page, on the browser, sorry, the page is fully loaded on the browser, it's now time to manipulate it programmatically. So I listen to that event until the page is ready, and then I go to the server side and fetch all the heroes from that API. And fetch will return me a promise, and then hopefully when that promise is fulfilled, I go and display the heroes. Is clear? Mm -hmm. All right. Now that's it. Here is the. Uh, let me show you the get heroes. Very simple API. Very simple. Two lines. I can make it one line, but just to make it uh, more elegant. So here is my URL, and here is the fetch. This is a built-in function in, the, in modern browsers, not IE. And I put it. I give it the URL, and it gives me. Uh, it is a promise, so I do it then. When it's fulfilled, I get. I get the reply coming from the server in this object called the response. And then I, I get from it because the response will have the header and the body. Remember, I, I, when, I, when it comes back, it says 200 OK and some other headers. I, in this case, I don't care too much about that. I'm getting to the body of the response and converting it to JSON and returning it to the caller. Okay? So this is very common the way we do it. Is clear so far? Now, I call it from here, and when it's fulfilled, I will call this display heroes. This display heroes, these three lines, you will always do the same. And these three lines, you don't need to really uh, dream about them. You just go to handlebars documentation and it tells you what you need to do. So the page has a template. So you grab that template, you get that template from the page, and you compile, you compile it. it. This is how handlebar people designed it. Mm -hmm. So just follow the documentation. You compile it, and then you take that compiled, compiled version of the template, you feed it the input. And that's it. It generates for you the HTML. Now you have the HTML at your hand. What do you need to do with that HTML that was generated? You inject it back in the page. You inject it in the page. So let, let me explain this. Here it is. So here is my template. I ha it has an ID. So I can refer to it from the JavaScript. Anything that has an ID, I can grab it from the, from the JavaScript. And when I say uh, heroes template.html, I will get I will get this stuff. This is what I will get. So this line, what I want to show you. This line gives me the actual table with the placeholders. Okay? So then, if you see here underneath, I have an, uh, three, uh, another placeholders where I will inject the generated HTML. So, template is just there for me to fill at a runtime to generate HTML on the client. That HTML, I have to put it back in the page so the user can see it. So, I always have a placeholder to inject the generated HTML, and this is how I do it. Here it is. No, sorry, not that one. Here it is. I go to this heroes and say, oh, by the way, the, the HTML that you have generated, please place it in this, in this uh, div. Is clear so far? All right. Now, so far is very good. Uh, here it is, our names, and these are the actions beside each one. Now, here, when I click this link, I want to, sh to go to the server, back to the server, get the details of this particular hero, and then display them here. Okay? So let me show you how it works. I, I was just working on the, 
this moment. You see here, when I click, I get I get that so information. Kind of that yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So first, the information we already have a service to give us the information, mm -hmm. and we tested the server. By the way. Yes. Don't start developing and developing and developing and at the end you say, I will test. It will never work that way. Especially if you are in the beginning stages. Each step test as you go. Very important. So you saw when I, when I created the repository, I tested it separately. Because I make sure, yes, it is working. When I, when I make it a service, if there is any problem, the repository is very basically <laughs> innocent, has nothing to do with the problem, because it works. Now, the, the suspects will be the service. So, I, when I write the service, I go to my browser and test the service separately. And the service works 100%. So, I don't go and make use of the service until I test. Now, when I, when I put the service and try to fetch it and call it from the page, then if there is any problem, it is the code in my page, not the service. You see here? So I progressively basically do this, that unit testing. I test as, you, as I go to make sure, like if you test at the end, you it's very hard to know where the where coming from. But that is the idea. Okay, so in here, you can see definitely there is an event, click event. And the way on click, what should I do? Go to the server. Yes. Display and display on the on the on the page. Yes. Okay. So for for fetching, we have a service already. Mm -hmm. We developed it. We tested it. We just fetched the information, and we need another template to do this yeah, one. Right. So I create another template. Here. Get get the details and do the three magic lines. Getting the template, compiling exactly. it, and feeding the information to it. Okay, so those are standard programming tasks. So here it is. Here is my here is my links. You see in my templates, I had the links. Here it is. Here is the links. Here it is. Please don't use this. I have a better way, but it didn't work so far. Be patient. I, there is a better way. This is not very good, but I have no choice because of the time. This this is where jQuery really excels. You don't you don't go to the to the control and listen to the events in there. You listen using jQuery. As the listener, as the client. Yeah, on the script. Yes, yes. So you leave the HTML very very clean without any code. Mm -hmm. But I, I still didn't get. I had some little error. I couldn't get it working. So I am doing it the traditional way, not the best way. But this will be fixed. Much better version. But for now, the, the lucky thing is that this one is really very easy to understand. So I have these links. The href, I'm just putting this just to say, okay, I want this link not to be normal link. Normal links is when you click them, they will try to go to the server to do something. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want it to go to the server. Instead, I want it to just if somebody clicks. Is just to do this void. It's not very good. Anyway, uh, I have a better way. But we see it always in the, yeah. the websites. Yes, this one means please ignore the normal behavior of a link mm -hmm. and let me handle it myself. Mm -hmm. If somebody clicks, what should I do here? Display. I display that particular ID that was clicked. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Yes. Yeah. Same thing here. If somebody clicks update, Please don't do the normal behavior of the link. Rather, call this update here. Okay? And this one, I didn't do it yet. Okay? But we will see. So let's focus on this. So as you saw here, here it is. If I do inspect, you will see that link has this display here one. And this one will be three. Inspect. So each link knows the hero that will be Call. called, th that will be displayed. This is one way of doing it. There is a much better way, of course, that it didn't work for me, but this way is okay, not bad. There is a better way. All right, now let's see that display hero, how it works. Here it is. So I go to display hero. Of course, it takes an ID. 
What I do, I go and fetch the hell of details from the server. It is a promise. When it is fulfilled, I grab the template from the page, compile it and fill it, and then display that information. This is for display. Very, very simple. Here is my hero. I have, you see page can have multiple templates. This is for the list of heroes. This is one particular hero. Mm -hmm. So I grab the name. Oh, this is sorry. This is a form. This is a form. Let me the second one. Yes. Again, this is not the best way. I will show you the final one will be much better. Okay. Here is the name, the hero type, and the code. So at at runtime, I grab this template, compile it, give it one hero and it gives me a full HTML. What do I do at this HTML? I go to this div and inject it in there. Doctor, yes, uh, the attributes and the, and the template, for example, code should be the same and the value of the Sorry, the same the, the variables should be the same as like in the files? Uh, no, or not in the files. Yeah, yes, look, mm -hmm. basically, this is the good thing about JSON. So when I call a REST service or web API, you always should test it outside your program. So here it is. So what you do is you do something like this. Here is heroes, hero, heroes one. So you know that when you call this URL, this is what you will get. Yes. You have the ID, the name, the hero type, and the code. This is what you will use in your template. Yeah, the same. same name, of course. It has to be the same name. Has to match. So if you if you if you want you if you are interacting with a service that you never seen, so you better interact with it this way. See how the response looks like, and then you can grab from here the pieces of data that you care about and place them in the template yes. in the double curly brace. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Of course, the the names should match. Yes. And by the way, you don't get any error if the name does not match. You don't get anything basically. Yes. So you need to be careful. Okay. And that's it. This one working fine. You can see when I click, I get different one. A lot of things is going on this click. It's doing a rest, it's doing an Ajax call, asynchronous call in the background to the server to get the information, and it partially updates the page. Is clear so far? We are ready for edit? Yes, we are ready for edit. So edit, here is edit. Although it's not fully complete, but here it is. So the, this is supposed to be uh, like, see here I have a drop down and I have whatever, I can change things. All right, or I can do this one, change, and so on. There are some bugs, of course, it's not re uh, fully ready. This one's supposed to be set to this when I load it. but. Exactly the same idea. When I edit, okay, I need to get that, that hero from the server side. Instead of displaying it, I will use a form and put the information in the form. Okay? So let me show you. So I have here another template. Here is another template. Are using code this time? No, I have. A, we will program. We will program the submission together. I have not done that part, so we will do it together. Hopefully, we can manage to do it. Here it is. Uh, in here, for display purposes, I did not use a form, but because I am going to edit, what I'm doing here, I'll be doing a form. So I create a form, form elements with some inputs. Here is the inputs for. First of all, I have this hidden input. I will explain why I need it. Yeah. Yes, because I need the ID. ID. Yes. While the, the user does not care too much about the ID. Mm -hmm. So I make it a hidden thing, hidden input. Mm -hmm. Then I have the name. Here is the name. And I put here the value equal to the value that came. Because I'm doing here an edit. So the value would be this. And here is the, uh, here's the code. And the value would be codes that came from the existing object, and here is the drop-down. Drop-down I have to work on. It doesn't matter. For now, we are at least able to 
bring the details of a particular hero and show it on the phone with some little box. Okay, it's clear so far? And exactly the same, no problem here, exactly the same as view. We have a, here is the implementation. Here it is. So here is update. Exactly the same. I go to the server, grab the hero, and then it's just instead of using hero template, I'm using hero form template. Compile it, feed it the object, get get the generated HTML, and stick it on the on the on the, on the page in this in this thing. And then suddenly I have the page in front of me. Okay. Now the page. This is where I stopped, and this is hopefully we can try to do it together. So first, let us now go to the server side and create a URL that can accept a POST request and take that hero and save it on the file. So let us now forget about the UI. Let's now go back to the server side. Create that POST and then hopefully uh, test it on also, and then we come back and connect the two, connect the page with our address service. But why post not put, uh, not put? In this case, put is better. Yes, you're right. For update, put is better. Post is mainly we use it's better for create. So we use post for creating a new resource, and we use put for updating the resource. Now, there is also, since you brought along this discussion, although I will postpone it. There, is, there, is other, there are other differences between post and put. So let me show you better to continue, and I will leave this uh, kind of a bit theoretical discussion uh, at a later stage. So let us go back to the app. Okay. And, all right. So I have a, yes, no problem. Let me just ignore this one. And let me just go here, app dot put. So, so app is basically, you can think of it as a web server. When we say web server, it is able to understand the HTTP verbs. The get, the post, the put, and the delete. So now I want to handle the put request. Here is a put, okay? And basically, the people come in it will come to a certain URL. And I will put here API slash heroes, slash heroes. Then specific hero. Specific hero. So that specific hero is prog is is uh, program dynamic. Dynamic. Yes. Is dynamic. So it's part of the URL. This is a static part of the URL. And this is a reading dynamic. parameter. Mm -hmm. So that's why I proceed it with Column, and it will be accessible from the request. Uh, from the request. Okay. So same, exactly the same thing. Uh, I will. Uh, I will also when when this request arrives, express will basically give me these two objects: request and response. Alright. So here's how I will handle this. So first of all, I want to know the hero that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to save it. No, for, no. First, first, let us read this file yes. because really, what I want to do, I want to search for that particular hero, mm -hmm. update Fine. it with the details that came with the new hero, and then save save, save it back to the file. You, you get the algorithm. Yes. Okay. So let us first grab the hero that the user wants to update. So, so request dot params. So this is a built-in, a built-in object that gives me access to the parameters coming in the URL, and here the ID. This could, be, as I mentioned, could be anything. If you make this hero ID, it will be hero ID. Yeah. Student ID, student ID. It's up to you. Now I have at my hand the hero ID. Okay. Now. What about the hero itself, the new hero details that came, that the user have posted to me or sent to me? From where I will get it? From the request. So request.body. Now, 
This is where, remember I told you I will explain this later. But by the way, the way it works in Node.js, here is Node.js. Oh, let's explain it here. Here is Node.js. On top of this, there is, on top of Node.js, we have Express. So, when the request comes, when the request comes to the server, you can pass it through a series of processing steps. It gets, the request gets intercepted along the way, and you can pass it through a series of steps to process the request. So, those steps, are also called as middleware. It's just the terminology of this package to express, they call it middleware. A middleware is basically like a, a steps that the request goes through before processing. So you can you can intercept. So in here I am I would be injecting a middleware or I'm injecting a step in the processing in the processing chain. You can think of it as a processing chain. And you can configure that chain. Mm -hmm. So in here, what I'm doing, I am getting this library that is also open source called the body parser. Body parser means it will it will go to the body of the incoming request mm -hmm. and it will convert it to a JSON object automatically for me. Okay. So because when I have a form, by the way, when I have a form, typically when I submit the form. It comes, usually it comes with a name equal value, semicolon, name equal value, semicolon, and so on. But this body parser, it can get that, those values and convert them to a JSON object. So the way I do it, I just say, go to the app and say, I want you to intercept the request and make it, take it through this body parser. So I go here and say, body parser that you are an encoder, extend the true, which I don't understand. But this one I understand. Uh, which means, please intercept the request, grab the body and make it a JSON. Okay. So these two lines, I'm not sure. Maybe we can even disable this, I'm not sure. But this one, which, which, I, which I care about, is intercept the request, go to the body part, and make it a JSON. Okay. So, when I come to put, here is put. When I say request.body, I have already a JSON object that has the hero that was passed. Even if it came as a name equal value, column name equal value, that body parser middleware intercepted it and made it a JSON object. Are you following? Yes, yes. All right. So now I have these two pieces that I need. This is the, the ID of the, of, the, uh, of the hero I want to update, and this is the new values of the object. Yes. All I need to do now is go to the file, usually because it's file, this is the, this yes. is the problem with files. Yes. You have to read all the heroes, read them all, look for that particular one that changed, change it, and then save back the whole file. No, but it doesn't help you. Because if it was database, yes. Because file, you have to read it all, change whatever you want to change, and then save it back. Okay? So, so let us uh, grab... Oh, unfortunately, the time. No, I mean, so, clearly, yes. I mean, it does read the whole file and return a specific one that I want. But that doesn't help me. So let, let me show you. Here is an example of add. I, I will give you this fully, fully, and maybe try to record the video to further explain. Here it is. Here is an example of add. Here is an example of add. So to do add, I read the whole file. Okay? And then I push, I read the whole file into the heroes message. Sorry, here it is. I go to heroes. And get. Yeah, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's not this. It should be then. Yes. So, to be able to add a hero, I read all the heroes, I put them in an array, okay, and then I push to that array new hero. So I have the new hero in the array, and then I 
Save it back. This should be not a write, not a read. It should be a write. Okay. Same thing for update. Update. I will read all. Adding new one. Adding new one. No, what? Just yeah. Update. Like change it. Change it. I don't write that. Yes, and I write back the whole file. You will do that. Uh, so you will get a fully working example. Okay. So here is how you do it. And then on the client side, and let me just show you this. On the client side, to be able to, to call that uh, put request, you will, you will use something like this. The same fetch function. Remember the fetch that we used to retrieve from the server side? You can also use it to push things to the server side. So what you do is, in fetch, you put the URL. Let's say, in our case, would be API slash hero slash that particular hero. Let's say one, two, three, four. And then, instead of post, it will be put. Okay. And then, then what you, what you can do is you can basically either use plain JavaScript or use jQuery to read the values from the form. This is how you read the values from the form. You can say document dot query selector and the name of the the name of the input. Yes. Remember every input has a name. Yes. Yes. So you grab those, put them in variables, and then you put them in the body of the of the request. Doctor, is it the same thing for the logins? Same thing. This is an example login. Let me undo. Let me undo. This is an example of how you post the username and password to the login yeah. page. Okay. You grab the username and password and you stick them in the body of the request. Okay. But like the example I, I'll be finalizing in one hour or so, you will get a good working example. Okay. But the idea is this. And today is the end of the You have a lot today. Thank you and I